Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens and Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I got a bunch of different topics this week, but uh, anyway, I uh, was just wondering if your year is going better now or uh, worse or about the same as the last year or two, you know, with the whole pandemic thing. Let us know down in the comments. So let's take a look at some pens. All right, so these are the pens that I've been using throughout the week. From left to right, we have the Parker Sonnet, the Central Pen 100820, the Senator President, Olami 80, which I will admit I refilled, uh, Aurora 88 Vintage, Lamy 2000, Reform 4328, Watcherman Hemisphere, and with a much better nib, I have the Pen BBS 487. And I just noticed two things. One is I put these two pens in the wrong order. The other is you might notice that the Waterman Hemisphere is kind of leaning toward this... Uh, and, oh, we like you. I like you. Yeah, definitely some attraction there. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. And, yeah, and it's also attracted to the reform. Eep. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, dude. Okay, I'm glad I took the picture when they were in the other order. All righty. So we'll put it not in the order that's in the video description. Um. Yeah, magnetic filling mechanism, so there's a strong magnet in the cap. I was noticing the alakia between the Waterman Hemisphere and this Pen BBS, but apparently it's a lot stronger with the Reform pad, so that was hilarious. And totally unplanned and unexpected, but we're going to leave it in, because that's how I roll. As I usually do, I'll be doing my writing samples in this Cognitive Surplus Notebook. All right, so for my very first, oops, which he drops on his desk, my very first pen, we'll be using the Parker Sonnet, which is a you know, slimmer pen, one of Parker's nicer offerings. Uh, I've been experimenting with it this week for an upcoming video uh, where I'm going to compare it with another pen, uh, not a Parker pen. So look forward to that in the next few weeks. I'm planning to film, now that I've experimented, I'm planning to film the talking portion on Sunday. So this is the Parker Sonnet. Would you believe that's a fine nib? And the ink inside, ooh, and we are totally not on screen. So let's just zoom out a teens, oops, not in. Zoom out a teensy bit. Reviews, I like to get close and snuggle. Um, first impressions, too. But with this, I like to be have a wider view. The ink in it is Parker Quink. And, you know, what else would I put in a Parker sonnet? <laughs> Blue-black. Ha! You thought I'd say washable blue. So, yeah, I, I put Parker Quink blue-black in it. It's a blue-black that I really like. Uh, Pilot is another one that I really like. This one, honestly, this one behaves better on paper than the Pilot version, although I slightly like the Pilot color better. And one of these days, if I ever get into it, I might even uh, compare some blue-blacks. In fact, this might be the pen to do it in. That might be fun. You know, film a, a scene with this pen, film a scene with uh, this pen filled with the next blue-black, and so on. Do some swatching and so on. Yeah, it might be kind of fun. But anyway, this is a comfortable pen, a slip cap. Uh, it's a nice... I, I don't usually like metal sections, but I don't mind this one. It's just a nice pen for uh, everyday writing. My next pen is definitely not an everyday writer. This is the Central Pen 100820. I uh, inked this up actually to show the Moto Lisa when I met up with her last week. This week has been very 
boring by comparison because I haven't met any celebrities. So this is a central pen. 100820. Kind of my gateway pen to uh, co collecting uh, the lesser known brands. So the ink in it is Edelstein, which is a Pelican version. It's uh, their luxury black. I think another thing that might be O N Y X. Wow. Uh, I think another video that might be fun is to compare a bunch of black inks, ink them all up again in the same pen, and uh, compare. So that might be something. Would it be fun in this pen? I feel like maybe this isn't the pen for that video. I mean, call me crazy, but uh, this pen is more about um, I usually put more fun colors in this pen because it's, it's just such a fun nib. Nothing against black. I, I use more black ink than anything. I just uh, <laughs> that's just not the, whoops <laughs> that's just not the pen I typically would put black in, you know. I have here my Senator President, very big pen. Uh, I forget who it was, but somebody was recently telling me, it could have been online, that uh, this is very comparable to the Mont Blanc 149, except I am going to go out on a limb and guess it's a lot lighter. I could be wrong about that, but... So this is a Senator President. And this has a broad gold nib. Uh, I do have one with a steel nib that's just not quite as much fun. The ink in it is Rohrer and Klingner. Alt Goldgrün. Which is sort of an odd green, but it's one I enjoy. I never really thought much of it until I got a pen pal letter written in it. I was like, whoa, that's actually a super nice ink. Uh, one thing that's been happening to me lately is uh, I've gotten a few texts, and uh, texts are just not in my ha habit. I often don't notice I've gotten a text for days, or like happened this week, my cell phone battery has been dead for most of the week and I never noticed. <laughs> so if you're one of the people who's been texting me, I apologize for that. I don't know why that color... Oh, because one of the people who texted me was texting some writing they'd done in that color. So if you text me, yeah, I don't expect an instant reply. <laughs> I am... Uh, it sits in my bag at school if I even take it to school. And uh, usually I notice that the battery's dead when I need it for something. So this is a Lamy 80 with a double broad nib. And the ink in it is, once again, Edelstein Onyx. And I will repeat that uh, this is another one that I usually put a more fun color in. But this is a real good candidate if I want to compare the blacks, just because this will show off, some black inks have shading. This one has a little, and this is a pen that might help show that off a bit. I mean, not amazing shading, but it is a sh slightly shading. So, this might be a good pen. Actually, it'd probably be a good pen for the blue blacks. So heck, it's a good pen. I like this pen a lot. It's just fun. You, you can uh, click on the video description. I've got uh, a link to the original first impression I did of the pen, and I was Im impressed. This is my vintage Aurora 88 from either the late 1940s to the early 1950s. Another good daily writer type of pen, uh, with the caveat being that they're not making any more of these. Uh, the ink in it is Pelican. 
And Aurora makes another blue-black. I can't remember if I own one. But this isn't blue-black. This is Pelican 4001 Royal Blue. Which I suppose is supposed to be comparable to uh, Parker Quink Washable Blue. Because this, I believe, is another washable blue. Uh, that's another video I need to do soon. I want to compare just some washable blues. And more looking at the washable aspect of them than anything else. So uh, I try not to get fountain pen ink on my clothing, but it happens from time to time. I have an orange shirt around here somewhere that's got a lot of ink spots on it. Uh, we get to one of my favorite pens, the Lamy 2000. I don't know why, but every so often it gets this habit of, uh, you know, I just open up the cap and it's full of, and then there's just ink all over. You know, the condensation, yeah, that happens, but uh, the ink, I don't quite get that. So this is a Lamy 2000, which uh, normally I don't do this during the year, but I refilled it. And uh, last night, actually. Uh, washed it and refilled it so it's a little diluted right now so it's got a fine point on it you know I would have thought the water would be flushed out by the act of filling but I think the the feed is still saturated with water so Pelican 4001 this is not impressive at all this morning brilliant black Yeah, I'm not impressed, but again, I refilled it. Oh, wow, you didn't see any of that. See all the railroading? I refilled it and uh, cleaned it and everything. I didn't set it to dry, so that may be part of the problem. Because usually I'll set them nib down on some paper towel for a few hours to wick out any excess moisture. And, you know, it also is a way to find out, oh, yeah, you didn't clean that pen quite as well as you thought you did. But uh, I didn't do that with this one. I just cleaned it and then refilled it. The main reason I cleaned it is, like I said, I on my last fill, I, I would have a lot of condensation and sometimes a lot of ink around here, which I wasn't thrilled by. This ink, yes, I'm giving you the finger, comes off of that vintage Aurora 88. Uh, it gets, it, I think it got a little ink on the inside of the cap because I can see it right there where I rested my finger. And then, of course, it gets all over the barrel. Yeah, I wiped some off there. You didn't see me doing that, but that's what I did. And I can, you know, if you need to clean out a cap, um... Q-tips work, but also so does rolling up a tissue or a, a paper towel or something, and then going going ham like this. I got a little. Actually, that was already on the paper towel. Whatever. Who cares? It's a pen. Pens are supposed to be inky. And this one being used does have a few scratches and nicks and abrasions and so on. I mean, that's just the risk you run when you use used pens. All right, my next pen, I think could have been a daily writer. Probably wouldn't have been my choice as a daily writer, but whatever. I like the aesthetic of a slim black vintage pen. See, the reason I wouldn't have picked this as a daily writer is it's just uh, this gold nib is fun. <laughs> uh, the ink in it is Edelstein. Onyx. So again, a nice uh, black ink. Uh, normally, I don't see as much difference between this and the Pelican, the regular Pelican black that I used up above, but you know, this time I kind of do. There we go.
I decided, you know, I was going to, I told you last week I was going to clean this pen out, but uh, because this pen sat for whenever I last used it last school year until I just noticed it last week and pulled it out of my pencil cup at work. But I decided, uh, no, let's not clean it out yet. I decided to refill it, you know, to fill it with uh, um, base state blue. So I, you know, I drained out what was in it by running the converter and then I filled it because I kind of thought, well, maybe this base state blue, this fresh fill of base state blue will help dissolve stuff and then it'll be easier to clean properly. So that's where I'm at with this pen. So Watcherman Hemisphere. This could be a daily writer. If you like slim pens. And that might be a that might be a good video too. Actually, what would be a good daily writer pen? So this is Noodlers. But I won't film that until I've got, you know, this properly cleaned and all of them are performing at their best. So, you know, when you're talking daily writer pens, they talk about everyday carry, they talk about daily writers, uh, workhorse pens, all kinds of different things. And I suppose part of it comes down to what are you using the pen for? You know, with my, when I'm at work, I do a lot of capping and uncapping, so a slip cap makes sense. At home, a lot of my writing is more long form, so a screw cap doesn't bother me. So I suppose part of that comes down to what is your purpose? Which would make a, a video, I guess. Uh, this is a Chinese pen. This is a Pen BBS 487. I didn't like the nib that was on it. I replaced it last week with a Nema sign broad, but it turned out that was uh, bent. I didn't notice it. This is a Goulet broad nib. I've got the nibs. I might as well put them in something. And a lot of these Chinese pens are much improved with a, a better nib. Um, drew a blank there for a second. Pen BBS. See, and uh, if you saw last week, it's writing a lot better. Goulet nibs are actually Yovo nibs with Goulet branding on them. So, you know, if you buy Anderson, it's basically the same nib, and I forget who else. Anyway, Yovo makes a lot of nibs for a lot of different people. So, anyway, this is, again, Edelstein. Black. No, Onyx, sorry, Onyx. So, uh, yeah, all in all, kind of a dismal collection of colors. I guess the uh, Bay State Blue is kind of bright, and the uh, Alt Gold Grun is kind of bright, but we got a lot of black and blue. So we'll try to liven it up a little next week. Because some of these pens are close to empty, so I, I'm expecting a big change next week. But I also have a lot of pens inked up from my... Uh, Whole, hey, I'm visiting the Mona Lisa, so I got to show off some fun pens to her thing. So <laughs> there is that. But anyway, those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. Uh, I have a lot more inked up right now. I have an amazing number of pens inked up, in part thanks to the Mona Lisa, and in part thanks to some videos I've filmed on the side. I uh, didn't get my review done this week. I had. Uh, I needed, basically, I needed to film the talking part of the video, and, uh, yeah, I just didn't get to it. It was a busy week. Conferences were this week, parent-teacher conferences, so I had a, a lot of work to do preparing for that. And then, one, you know, conferences, you finish teaching, and then you're there till 9 p.m. doing conferences. So, uh, and I thought I would get this done on, th on uh, Friday after school, but, so instead, I get home from school. I post that, yeah, I, I'm getting there. Uh, I put my uh, supper into the microwave because I was eating leftovers for supper. Sat down on the couch while waiting for it to beep. Next thing I know, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> so, 
I guess I was tired. So here I am Saturday morning filming this, but I guess I needed the sleep because I, you know, 1 a.m. I wake up like, uh, I go to bed and next thing I know it's about 7.30. So yeah, I think I needed the sleep. And I apologize if the sound was a little bit off during the writing sample. I didn't notice that the gain on my microphone was up. Um, I like to keep it lower so it doesn't pick up as much background noise. But anyway, um, last week's pens and use, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just can't live up to it this week. <laughs> uh, all that traveling and meeting people and so on is just, I, I can't do that every week. Especially not this week. Um, but... It was kind of fun, and then I had, uh, of course, I got to see Dune in the theater. Uh, it, I've had more time to think about Dune. I did, you know, like a first impressions of Dune. A couple things I've thought of since then, like, okay, why do we have Baron Floaty? Why can't he just have suspensors, like in the book, that just help him hold up his weight? Instead, he floats everywhere, which is dumb. And that's something I've not liked with the miniseries. I haven't liked with the 1984 movie. It just... Uh, he doesn't fly around, but at least he didn't have the weird flying around the smoke with uh, Fade Rautha in his, I don't know, what was it, a bird speedo or something? It was weird. Anyway, at least we didn't get that horrible scene, uh, but anyway, I, I've had a few more thoughts. Who knows, I may talk about them at some point, but I'm not really a movie channel, but I maybe I should review the book. So, that may come. Um, one thing I talked about during last week's Pens and Use was that I was pretty frustrated with my job last spring. You know, it was a lot of different factors, and a lot of them not in my control. Um, I know a lot of people commented when I did my first Pens and Use after school let out how much happier I seemed. And, uh, I don't know, that could be. I was really not happy last year, and, uh, like I said in that, like I confessed in that pens in use, I was thinking about a different job or <laughs> get out teaching altogether. But uh, so far this year, I'm in a much happier place. And I think, uh, yes, the COVID is a threat. Um, I think I'm happy. Wow, that helped. <laughs> you should have said something. Um, I think having the vaccination has helped put me in a better place. You know, I just feel like I've done what I can for myself. So I'm, and I'm still at the mercy of the people around me, but much less so. So, uh, you know, even if they won't take care of themselves, at least I can take care of myself kind of thing. So I think that's been a big help. Um, and who knows what, there was a lot going on. I don't really want to get on, get into all that because I don't know, personal stuff and, Stuff that just shouldn't, you just don't share on in a recorded format. Yeah, I'm talking to you people that overshare on Facebook and so on. Some things are not meant to be written down. You might say them to your friend, but you don't record them or write them down. So, uh, moving on. Um, I was actually thinking about going on location. I had a thought that, oh, Friday... Because there were some comments about a church with an outhouse. I thought, I know where there's a church with an outhouse right around here. And uh, I was going to go out to it Friday after school. But, well, it took me forever getting out of school. And then I get home and, uh, like I said, microwaved my supper and woke up at 1 a.m. So probably just as well I didn't try to operate a car. Um, but anyway, I, I think that's that will come. I'm kind of thinking that might be one I film on Veterans Day, if it's not too cold then. Because uh, it, it's a holiday. We get Veterans Day off, even though I think this year it's a Thursday. It's November 11th. I j just may have the day wrong. Day of the week wrong. Okay, 5 plus 6. Yes, it's a Thursday. I know that because next week is November 5th on Friday, and that will be Fountain Pen Day, so... Yeah, okay, I use fountain pen day to <laughs> remember dates. I'm sorry, I'm weird. But I'm a fountain pen channel, so I'm allowed to do that. But anyway, um, I was off there. I don't... Okay, there is a black lab leaning out of the pickup that just stopped at the stop sign there, and he is barking like crazy. I don't. Maybe he saw the rabbit 
that lives in my yard. Any, <coughs> excuse me. So if I've got the gain down, maybe you didn't hear it. But anyway, I have, uh, the only other thing I wrote down is I had planned to do a Halloween special. If you don't realize the October 31st is Halloween and I was going to appear on Halloween and, uh, I was going to start out, you know, just like it's a regular pen review, but I want to find the history of this pen. And um, I fell apart with getting the script the way I wanted it and working out details. So uh, I decided over the summer, you know, I'm going to keep working on the script. I'm going to get it the way I want it. Uh, one thing I will do. I also felt like if I was going to have guest stars, I needed to give them more warning. Because some of them, it's like, oh, how are you going to get that video to me? Others, you know, they can just do the Dropbox thing or whatever. But some would struggle with that. So I just thought, yeah, I'm going to give them lots of time. And uh, with students, that's sometimes a mistake to give them too much time. Because then they waste it. And then at the last minute, like, oh, shoot, I got to get this done. and Because it's due today. So, uh, you no, know, that might be a mistake. I don't know. But anyway, so no Halloween special. But I haven't forgotten. Uh, the other thing I was going to work on this summer, and I did, <laughs> was the uh, history of the Great Sioux War. It just uh, its turning into a bigger project than I realized. And I think my ha trouble is going to be in this coming year editing it down, both information-wise and on location-wise. So... I don't have a staff. I, I've got me, so we'll see. That will appear. It's It has not been forgotten and it has been worked on. You just haven't seen any of the fruits of my labors yet. Um, and, and I've been, I finished a book recently. No, it's not on the bookshelf. I must have it laying somewhere. Uh, I did read a book recently and I'm going to film the book review soon. It's called Cadillac Desert. It was about water in the West. And I, same thing I had thought. I could do all kinds of B-roll. I was just thinking of the dams near here that I could put in the background. And then the more I thought about that side of it, I'm just like, you know, be nice. But is it really that worth that amount of time to do one video that's probably going to be 10, 15 minutes long? So I decided not. Uh, I'm going to, I've got some B-roll of lawn sprinklers. And I've got some B-roll I need to film, but it's close. There's a dam south of here that's mentioned in the book, so I think I'll just do some B-roll by that dam and call it good. I do have some footage of uh, Lake Sakakawea that I could harvest and the Garrison Dam that I could harvest from previous videos back when I was less good at filming, but we'll see. I may just harvest that anyway. Actually, the... Lake Sakakawea footage is kind of cool. I'm, I'm in uh, Newtown, which <laughs> definitely will play into that review, and coming down the hill toward Lake Sakakawea, and you see the shadow of the bridge cast across the water of the lake. So it's kind of a cool image in one of my driving videos. So I will harvest that, I think, instead of go trying to go on location. And I have a very bad tour of the Garrison Dam, so I'll, I'll harvest that. And, yeah, it, it's just... You know, the, what's in my mind and what I actually have time to do are two different things. And uh, if I made this my full-time job, yeah, I, maybe I could dedicate the time. But it's not my full-time job. I'm a teacher. And uh, that eats up an inordinate amount of my time during the school year. Uh, if I didn't have summers free, I would definitely wouldn't do this job for what I'm paid. But having summers free definitely helps because uh yeah it's not one of those jobs that that's just during the working hours it's one that goes way beyond that so uh anyway um i guess uh my big topic w was about you know are you happier this year i realized when i got the vaccine after the second vaccine 14 days after the second vaccine i know i felt like a weight had been lifted off of me. It's just like, holy cow, I am now actually proactive and able to do something to protect myself. Because, of course, I'm surrounded by people who 
don't believe the, the virus is real or don't believe it's dangerous or just don't believe that they should have to wear a mask and deliberately choose to misunderstand what a mask is about uh, and who choose not to get vaccinated even though uh, the vaccination was actually developed during the presidency of someone that most of them politically support. So I, uh, yeah, I had done something to protect myself and uh, I was finally in a better place. You know, it, I just, it went bad. I had a, well, I remember when we were talking about it, I had a Science Olympiad regional competition and COVID was starting to be in the news and they were talking about lockdowns in, in China and we'd heard about lockdowns in other states and all of us coaches got together and talked to, you know, we were talking about, because we're all science teachers, we're all talking about the lockdowns and, you know, do you think it'll happen here? And yeah, yeah, it might. And, you know, how will we teach and all that. Next day we had school just as normal. But then the very last period of the day, the uh, high school principal got grabbed all the kids, grades 7 through 12, into the gym, because, you know, we don't have an auditorium or anything, uh, to talk to them. And he said, make sure you take everything out of your locker, because we don't know what's going to happen Monday. And I thought, oh, shit, <laughs> this is going to happen. And, yeah, no school Monday. Lockdown. And, uh... We were, the governor declared, I forget what it was called, but anyway, gave us a few days off. But, uh, yeah, we had that, so we got a few days, and as teachers, then we're expected to come in, and, you know, we, we all had to be in different rooms during this online meeting, and to just to talk about how, how school will be formatted now, and, um, uh, I didn't even own a mask or anything yet, because it hadn't even been on my mind, but, uh, you know, just a miserable end of the year doing it all online and then uh that summer i went absolutely nowhere i i stayed here and you know i've mentioned before i get a little cabin fever if i don't get out once in a while yeah and then school starts with all these restrictions and precautions and masks and and it was just miserable and uh you know, you think about it, you realize that, yeah, I was living under that from March of, what would it have been? March of 2020? March of 2020 into spring of 2021. And along the way, we had a really nasty presidential election and an insurrection. So, you know, just to add to the fun. So anyway, right now I'm starting the school year in a much better place than I did last year. So uh, hopefully it continues. Hopefully I'm in a much better mood. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> enough of that. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I, hey, is your life getting better now? Um, or is it getting worse? Or is it about the same? You know, I'm talking you know, in terms of the pandemic, I guess. Uh, let us know down in the comments. Well, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.